ケタタイテネフェノノタタイテネフェノエハレイトパケハテネフェノエンガリノモリマイカホコホコノハレチアタムタムヒアケタムタムヒアカムルアウテトゥトゥルタンアウテフェノノノマウリケテネフェノノノ
Itanalo hoki tera fenua me pehea eura ite tangata. Na hua tangakato teako teako ka timata mai reira mai te faka to tangata tikanga me waiata me koro mo nga oh me ki pene a hau pau e here korero na korero paki era me kato waiata pau koera na me hai fanga yatu a kiteuri kite tamai tine. I rotu i tērā e i koe tātou wariwari, ka hoki atu ki a tamawahine. Te whenua, ka whānau mai te uri, te tamaiti, ka puta mai te whenua, mai e te kōpū, o te matu wahine, ka whakahoki a tēnā whenua, mai i konei, kia papa tūnuku ki tēnā whenua hoki. Wai hoki me te whenua o papa tūānu, Te whenua o papatū ānuku i putai nā rana tira o te au. Ko tāna roa tērā, ko tāne tērā, ko roa mano, ko waiake, ko waiake, ko waiake. Ko nā rana tira i whakanohi ai, hai mana, hai mauri, hai manaki, hai karapoti i nā kaupapa katoa i roto i nā aitanga tāne. Ko te whenua hoki te pātaka e o rai te tangata. Ko taua pātaka, he pupuri i nga pia kāka wairua, e o rai te tangata. Ko mōhio rātou, ko mōhio tātou, te ao katoa, i ngā mahi a tau iwi kia tātou. Ko rirua nō ngā ika nei, nā ngā kai moana, i a rātou, mā rātou e kōro me mā au tēnei mā au tērā, e hea na tērā kia au. Nā ngā nā tātou, nā te iwi Māori ke e nei taonga. Ka ore rātou i kone, ko ngā Māori ke i kone i te tuatahi. Nō reira, kia au nei, ngā taonga nei, whenua, kai moana, ngā moana, ngā maunga, nā te Māori. Mo te rākau, mo nā mea katoa o te whenua nei, kā rei tapaina, he mea whakanoho he Māori. Nō reira, ka tipua ke te nā rākau, ka tirohia, a me whakanoho te Māori o tēnei rākau, ko taua. A nei o nga kaupapa. A nei o nga hua, a nei tāna, tāna mahi, i runa i te whenua nei. Nā, ka tipua ke te tahi rākau, nā ka tirohia anō, nā whakatohia te Māori o tēnei. Ko rimu. E nari tātou te tangata. I tapa inoa i tātou, kia mauai nā inoa tawhito. Kwa tapa ni, kwa tuku. E nari ko te whakatō Māori, a, he mea hou, he Māori. Kia tātou te iwi Māori me haere tonu me, whawhai tonu mo a tātou whenua. Kia hoki hoki mai. Kei te haere mai ngā uri whakatipu. Kei muri nei e tahi. Kia whai whenua i rātou, hei mahi whare mō rātou. O timata tēnei wāhi, te mahi whare mō ngā uri o konei. Nō reira, taku awhi i te tiriti. Kia hoki mai. Kia whai wāhi ai a tātou uri, ki rungu i tō rātou, i o rātou whenua. Venei tāke. Nā meki, haere ana koe ki ai ke te tiki manon. Nei nā tai atu koe ki reira, nā koe koe reiru anō koe. E i manono. I whakatohia te Māori ki a koe mo te whakamahu i nā whati. Nā, ko tērā ou e mai wiwi maira, nā runa i te tinihana, i te kōioio, nā, ka whati ia te waewae. Nā, ko tāku ki a koe, ki aro hara a koe ki tērā. Te nā koa, unua mai te tahi wāhi o. Ana, kua reira, hei reira kua mahi mai koe ne, kua waru mai koe te kiri, i nā pakia karane, i nā mutu tō, tō waru mai nā i te kiri, nā hea hatau ka whakahoki, kia manon. Ko tāu ka whakahoki, ko papatū ānu ko tonu ne, ko te kui ane, kua tiki koe te uku, Nā, kua paniatu ki te wāhi hore maira i āhoi. Hea hai, kia uruanu ai, kia wahoki tērā te mahu. 
ね。The problem that the Crown had was that their beachheads were very small uh, in Auckland here where the seat of government was established and the uh, New Zealand company settlements uh, at uh, Wanganui, New Plymouth, Wellington and Nelson uh, and later on the Otago settlers. So those beachheads were tiny and the problem that the government had was to extend its, uh, its dominion, its hegemony uh, over the rest of the country and the technique adopted was first of all massive purchase of land by Governor Gray in the South Island, who virtually bought up the whole of the South Island for about 14,500 pounds over a period of 10 years between 1848 uh, and 1860, uh, 10 to 12 years. The whole of the South Island was bought up, which allowed an influx of settlers to outnumber Māori. But in the North Island, uh, the tribes were much more numerous. They were not easily intimidated because Governor Gray threatened in the South Island, if you don't sell us this land, we'll just bring the soldiers down here. Uh, but in the North Island, the tribes organised and they resisted land sales, uh, and the answer was found in war, or they thought that they would find the answer in war. So in 1860, the wars broke out, extended into the North here in 1863 into the Waikato, and uh, three million acres of land were confiscated under the 1863 New Zealand Settlements Act. So the war was seen as a way of asserting uh, the Crown's um, sovereignty into the Waikato and opening up the Waikato for settlement and taking land by confiscation for military settlers. But they found that was a costly way of getting the land uh, because uh, I think they borrowed three million pounds on the English market to pay for that war. Um, and so uh, a much cheaper way was found when they devised the Native Land Court in 1867. Uh, which is a legal device, really, for the expropriation of Māori land. Uh, it's an artifice for legalised theft. That's what the Native Land Court was. And uh, it's quite scandalous. And I think uh, Rees, who was a land commissioner, uh, or sat on the Māori Land Commission, said, you know, uh, the dealings of the Native Land Court will make the cheeks of our future generations of our children blush with shame. A lot of you go to the courts these days for succession orders and Tikona Māori has in some sense taken over the view of succession that the land court has put in place. But it must be remembered, and it comes out clearly in this book, that those rules of succession were rules deliberately laid down by judges, Pākehā judges, to make sure that your tribal society was undermined. That's why they passed those succession laws in the first place. They said, let's not acknowledge Ahikāroa. Let's not acknowledge mana. Let's not acknowledge the rights of hapu. Let's not acknowledge the rights of whānau and of the collected relationships. What we want to do is recognise individuals, and only individuals can succeed to interests. And once you've done that, then we can get your land. That was what the court was about, 
That's the way they set it up? Well, total disillusionment because uh, they were economically successful at the outset, trading up and down the coasts, having their own ships, their own flour mills, bringing their, you know, producing, uh, growing the stuff themselves, uh, milling their own flour and transporting to the market. So they had their own economic infrastructure that was well on the way to, to development. For a short time, there was a, a great boom of, of Māori economic well-being, but as soon as Pākehā numbers and Pākehā power became more entrenched, then gradually the land got taken, sometimes by warfare and confiscation, but more frequently by the more subtle processes of the law. That happened with the land, it happened with the fisheries, it happened also with areas like culture and spirituality. The result of that was that Māori became dispossessed the result was poverty, inequality, depression, alienation, and a major dependency on the welfare state. But the wars interrupted those development, and thereafter there was total disillusionment and uh, a lack, lack of morale, loss of morale, uh, as a consequence of the, of, of the confiscations and uh, having to surrender. They were never completely defeated, but they could see that to continue to fight was futile. So when General Cameron said, you're ready to make peace now, uh, after Te Ranga and Gate Pa in the Tauranga campaign, uh, they said, yes, we'll make peace. But uh, Cameron too was wanting to make peace because uh, he got really mauled at Gate Pa. It was a, a really severe defeat for a British uh, a standing army, which at that date uh, numbered upwards of 18,000 men. It was the biggest imperial army in the field in any part of the world at that stage of, of our history. And Cameron realised after that defeat at Gate Par that to take New Zealand by a war of attrition was going to be a costly affair. <laughs> In 1867, the, the Native Land Court was set up and its job was to identify who owned what piece of land. Now, Māori land was held communally by the hapu, by the tribe, uh, by the iwi and by the waka confederation. You know, there were rough boundaries clearly known to each waka uh, and each territorial subgroup. One thing that the, the storekeepers did, according to, um, to Sorensen's analysis of what happened in Cambridge, um, these purchase rings were set up. The storekeeper would advance credit to a local Maori whom they knew had a lot of land. And once they got them into debt, they'd say, hey, you owe me this money, and if you don't pay me, I'm taking you to court. So um, faced with the judgment summons, uh, the chief who didn't want to sell his land had no other recourse than to sell land in order to get money to pay for his debts. Uh, so that, that, those were some of the nefarious activities that went on. So there was suborning of people to apply for title, there were gratuities, uh, liquor was part of the purchase payment, and uh, when the people got the title to the land uh, and they sold it, they got only a fraction of the money that they were promised because most of it went in lawyers' fees and survey costs and court costs and paying back the people who had advanced them credit to go and apply for the title. So it was a destructive period of Māori history between 1867 and uh, 1890, when most of the land went. I think seven millions was purchased pre-1860 uh, in the North Island. Uh, the whole of the South Island had been purchased by that time. And Ngaitahu were totally marginalised. They only had 10 acres a head left, and that was goat country. They couldn't even live on that. The, the Ngaitahu were beggared by Gray's policy uh, between 1858 and 1862. It should be a matter of honour. Unfortunately, it has until now been a matter of expediency, political expediency, because the breach of the treaty has been where Pākehā power has come from, economic expediency, because the country was built on dispossessing Māori. There were men of honour, 
but the powerful people, the vested interests, people like Russell and Whitaker, who established the uh, New Zealand Insurance Company, uh, the Bank of New Zealand, the speculators who wanted to open up the Waikato for their speculative ventures, uh, they had much more power and so they won the day. And in our own time, men of honour are having to clean up the mess and they're finding it very difficult. The Rangi Toto Channel. So in between te, uh, Rangitoto and their peninsula is Te Awanui or Peretu. So the waka came from the Pacific and, and came down that river. Some stopped here in Tamaki um, to, to link up with earlier arrivals from, from Toi and Kuper and, and others. However, most of the waka we, we know today, our, our, our corporate waka, did not stay for long. Uh, Tāmaki was full <laughs> already. Uh, so we know Te Arawa came, um, some jumped off, Kahu, Kahu Mata um, he stayed here. Some Ngāti Awa, uh, Mātātua also touched on here. Tainui Waka as well. Uh, we have lots of names left by different tūpuna uh, around Tāmaki. Iriroki ngā iatawi. Ia tau iwi ngā, ngā whenua nei nā rātou anō i tango. Tō mātou marā i raro, ia mātou nohoa nei i raro. Nā i tango hia e rā e te e tau iwi, public, through the Public Works Act, ne? i hari e rā. Me nei whenua, pērā tia katoa. So our tūpuna came through here, um, and, and some of the kōrero, some of the stories and names are left. We have... Um, Rangi Toto, Te Rangi Totongia Tameta Kapua is its proper name, or one of its names, and that commemorates the, the whawhai that uh, Hotiroa and Tameta Kapua had on that, on that island. Um, there was some conflict on, on first arrival. Uh, I think, like a good Aroa man, typical Aroa man, he, he, he hit on uh, Hotiroa's wife. There's a bit of conflict there. Uh, so Maunga Kia Kia, largest uh, man-made earth fort in the southern hemisphere. It's huge. One of the terraces on this western, uh, this western side that we're looking at is about a kilometre long. And that's like our modern day uh, major motorway project, you know, that, that, that you'll see people doing now in that time. You know, huge, huge job to construct these pa. One of the names for that pa and others is Ngafakairo Atitahi or Te Moko Atitahi. So Maunga Kia Kia is, um, uh, for a lot of reasons, is, is a very important um, Maunga. In its heyday, 5,000 people living on, on the slopes of Maunga Kia Kia and seven distinct papakainga. There's a lot of nutrients in the soil from, the, from these volcanoes, which produces bumper crops. Coupled with that, you know, um, you know once we were warriors, well, we know once we were gardeners, they, were, um, they had gardens of industrial you know, type scale here. One of those gardens was called Ngam, uh, Ngamara Tahuri. Tahuri's gardens, which went from Maunga Kia Kia to Waiaturua, which is about four kilometres huge. Um, another name for those gardens was Kohi Awhito Ngā Mara Atahuri. So the clouds of butterflies, if we were standing here today, you'd see across those gardens. Two seas. Uh, we have Taikehu on the Tainui Waka. When it landed, 
jumping off over on this side and doing his uh, reconnaissance on the Manuka Harbour, coming back and talking about him catching mullet with his hands. There was so, so much kai. Plenty of fish, two um, high tides, I guess finish fishing over here, <laughs> shoot over there, um, which is what the kuwaka do. We get about uh, 20,000 of them, I think, out um, near Te Atatu, um, and they fly between tides. And when they do, or when they did, or when they do, but when we did, we, <laughs> we <laughs> jump up in the air and whack them out of the sky and, and, uh, and, and catch them. We had two base camps, one at Onehunga and Maunga Kia Kia, and one which we called the Orake Kainga Complex, which is Remuera, uh, that little bay there, Hobson Bay, Kainga all through there. Two base camps, uh, in summer the head of each, each clan, Fano would have to move out from the base camp to satellite fishing villages dotted around the coasts. So we have fishing villages at um, Waipapa, bottom of Parnell Ro Road, Horotiu, Queen Street, uh, Te Tōr, at another Te Tōr, Beaumont Street, uh, Ōkā, Point Erin, uh, Ōpoutu Keha, Cox's Bay, Te Rehu, the zoo, uh, and so on. So each fish for shark, heaps of sharks still up under the harbour bridge, uh, the Waitamata River behind us here. Um, and you still hear fishermen talk about all of the shark that they'd go up there. Test all of the kai in summer and uh, autumn, and then when it's winter, come back to the base camps and share the kai. 1914, we had a sewer pipe under the operating. So, obviously, pre resource management act sections eight about consulting us and so on. So they cut off, cut off access. There was, there was no access to the, to the beach. Eight foot high pipe poured out the raw sewage out, out by Kelly Tarleton's there. Um, so Kelly Tarleton's aquarium is the old, old uh, sewers. Um, so that had, had obviously had an impact on everybody here, um, physically and wairua wise as well. Um, I think the Urake report, you know, pretty much says, you know, the pipe said what Auckland thought about Ngāti Whātu of Ōrāke. You know, they, they, they put all their uh, tiko here, uh, aimed it at us. I remember at that time when I was age nine and I asked my parents um, when we were living on the Papakainga at Ōkahu Bay and our house was burning and government workers were going around torching all the houses in the village. And I remember distinctly asking my parents, my father and my, my father, I says, why are they doing this to me? Why are they doing this to us? <laughs> we had 52 homes in, in, in the village. The homes were destroyed and burnt because Her Majesty the bloody queen was coming to Auckland. So they had to move the Māoris. They did that by burning us out and compulsory acquiring the remnant of our land, the last 12 acres. The people were dispirited. The people were crushed. My, my elders, uh, every week one of my elders died. In fact, six weeks after the burning of our whare, my grandmother died, and she died, and many of our other queer fire komatuas died. One week after the next, we were having tangis, and all our old people died. And they died not because of any illness or because of any uh, disability or any plague that ran through the marae. They died because they were broken. Their spirit was systematically broken after a hundred and hundred and thirty years of of trying to salvage their sacred heritage. Aole te mori ka li ka noa te ohonga ki te ao mapukau noa. Now, in the Waitangi Tribunal report, the burning of our homes 
was defined as a breach of the treaty. The removal of the people from their sacred, historical, ancestral land was a breach of the treaty. The move by the government to compulsory acquire our land was a breach of the treaty. A dozen other, 24 other things that were done to our people was a definite breach of the treaty. We are saying we've had enough. Recognise the Treaty of Waitangi, recognise the injustice that you have served upon the Māori people. And while we were on Bastion Point, this Bastion Point is Māori land. You have taken enough of our land under the Treaty of Waitangi. What you are is a breach of the Treaty of Waitangi. And we are saying enough is enough. And we were saying, give our land back. government decided to take away the last bastion of our land at Takaparafa, that we decided to physically form ourselves in front of bulldozers to stop once again the annexing of our ancestral land. Bulldozers were coming in. We had meetings with Winstone, and because all the Māoris were driving the bulldozers, we, we told the, the take, we told this is Māori land. They said that they will come, uh, bring their machines, but they will, won't drive on to ancestral Māori land. While it was Ngāti Whātua, Tāmaki Makoto, take, it became a Ngāti Māori take because so many Māori from uh, Ngāti Paro, from Te Aupori, from, from all the tribes were represented there in some fashion. We have stood up against the might of the Crown and we're not big men, but let them come and try and evict us off here We'll have so many people on Bastion Point. We want that kite to fly. We want that flag to fly. We want this house to stand because this is the basis of our pleas. Give our land back. And the visits from Komatuas, from Fire, from Queer was so amazing. The, the mass support from Maoridom. Uh, because uh, we were termed as radicals and troublemakers and, and, uh, and so on. But what it was a signpost for Māori all over Aotearoa.
Well, when Best in Point first started, remember, remember, important thing is that the the Māori Land March, the setting up of uh, Ngā Tamatoa, the setting up of Māori, Māori District Councils was in some way a beginnings of, um, of what culminated at uh, Bastion Point. Uh, of course, Bastion Point, we had nothing, so we had to do something to, uh, to arrest our position. The hard core of protesters is gathering at the front of the meeting house. They're chanting, singing Māori hymns. They're obviously not going to go voluntarily in spite of the repeated warnings. The police presence here is extremely heavy. Dave McCombs at Bastion Point. No action through the courts, no action through government, uh, no, um, no success through um, royal commissions or petitions. Um, there was a time to recognise that we were sons of chiefs and warriors, that either we throw ourselves into the sea or well, we stand up and fight. We stand up and physically fight and put ourselves in a position of confrontation. While breaking the law, we're not lawbreakers. We are breaking unjust laws. We became lawmakers, and it was legal to confiscate Maori land. While it was law and legal, was it right? It wasn't right. So we were, became law changers. that while Bastion Point is now back in the control of the Ngāti Whātua Trust Board, I'm saddened by the fact that my parents and my fires and my queers and my chiefs are not here to stand and, and be, be gladdened that we have restored the ancestral rights of our people. And that's, that's a sadness I'll carry for a very long time. What it will do, it will motivate me to remind my mokopunas, uh, remind our people uh, for the careful use of our land, for the rights of our people, must always be upheld, must never be given. Our land must never ever be trampled on ever again. And our rights must be respected and we must fight for those. We cannot lie back and be carefree and easy. We must always be watchful and alert. Consequently, our deliberations with the present government is for the reformation of our tribe, which has been destroyed. Um, any of the um, reparations that the government decrees for our people, they come very short of what the tribe deserves for repairing the tribe for enhancing their cultural well-being and to establish them in their, on their land and to build homes for our people. When your lands were restored here, back to your people, what impact did that have on your iwi, on Ngāti Whātua? Well, there was, there was moments of, uh, of sombre and um, careful thought um, because of the 160 years of struggle and finally there was victory and finally there was understanding and respect and finally there was uh, that acknowledgement 
by the government, the very people that that were responsible for our our demise, were responsible for our landless state. Um, there was a lot of quiet reflection, mainly upon um, so many of our valiant workers and queers and comatos. We paid respect. Um, we gathered together uh, in a very sombre meeting, a very sombre gathering, and we just just remembered. Um, for instance, my grandmother took her two weeks to get to Wellington. You know, now we hop on a hop on a plane with her in an hour, and we reflected up, upon all the hardships and the unjust way in which uh, our forebears were uh, suffered. And so we suffered with them in our moment of uh, of triumph. Uh, we had to um, we had to think and dwell upon it because there was so much sadness intermingled with with the relation with the realization that all our mahi uh, and all the mahi of our forebears had come to fruit, but we couldn't take all the credit. And uh, I demanded that uh, our people show uh, homage and pay, say, prayers and incantations to the valiant work that was done by so many. And we are only the receivers of what we demanded under the Treaty of Waitangi. representation for mana whenua at the top table. The conquest wasn't one day. The conquest over a period of time, and we established over a period of time the aitar of the, of the region, which then uh, gives right to mana whenua status because of our ahikaa being here from the 1700s to now. It's not about the first man on the mountain, it's about the last. Because we are part of the city, they forget we don't go away. They change, they go, but Tonga Te Whenua stays. Well, today's demonstration is about uh, getting a life for a Māori political voice. It's about gaining equality with, uh, with the Pākehā political voice so that at the table of the, city, the Super City Council of Auckland you have the best leaders from all cultures. That's the right thing to do in a multicultural age. The Royal Commission recommended this and the government has not acknowledged that and has um, said there will be no Māori seats on the Super City Council. Well for Te Arawa, we've come in solidarity with our whanaungatanga uh, relationships for our people of Ngāti Whātua and Tainui. Te Arawa, when our canoe arrived here, and there are many landmarks here, stayed for some months here in the isthmus of Tāmaki Makoto. So you'll have Okahu, Kahu Matamomoe Bay, you have uh, Mairangi, Oho Mairangi Bay, and you have um, Tamate Kapua leaving his uh, marks on several places. So for us in Te Arawa, we come to support that. But we also come here because this will be the precedent. If a super city is established without Māori representation, then again they will have trampled on our uh, status as Tangata Whenua and made us invisible. So we are here to ensure that we aren't invisible in the 21st century. <laughs> Ko te haere mai ki te tautoko i te reo 
kia whakaputai nanō te whakaaro ki mui te aroro o te kāwana tanga ki te kia te kia tika wā kōtua mai. Kei pōhe he kōtou, karakaua nei reo tō te Māori. Kei kune. from the people. It's the people. It's the people that count eh? If we're unified, we are forced to be recommended. <laughs> Tēnei Tino tautoko na hau, tino tautoko na hau me e i tenei rā whakahirahira mo tātou mo te Māori. I hana mai rai runa i ngā hono o tātou tewi mā. Mohona wokuna hono o roto me ki a mā tātua, a nei hono no hoki ki a ngā puhi o te rā ki a ngā te pātua. Koe nei tā mai te tautoko i te ao mā. O ākua. Mātu katoa ngā kuia katoa, haere mai ako e uana, kaha tonu mātu te puta mai te tautoko te kaupapa. Oh, I think Ngāti Whātua have shown tremendous grace and leadership. Ngāti Whātua deserve a voice. Uh, no other group has given as much to the city of, of Auckland as Ngāti Whātua. Tui ei roto, tui ei wā. Tui e te here tangata, ko koutou mai katoa tēnā, ko tai mai te haoro tēnei atu. Haere katoa mai koutou, me tōku mōhi ono, te āhua, e whakokotahi ana tātou i ngā here katoa e noho nei tātou i roti tāmaki makaura. Ko ere wāku mihi, e te uhono ana hau, ki waene i ngā koutou ki a tātou i mākatu i te kaupoko tēnei rā. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou rā, tēnā tātou katoa. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Ngāti Whātou, we'd like to welcome you all here today. To all of those other groups, our Pacific Island brothers from over to Monanui Akiwa, thank you very much. To all our Pākehā friends within this city, thank you. To all the immigrants from the eastern countries, from also the European countries, all the Asian groups, thank you for marching with us this day. We grew with the land. We are the land. We, the Maori people, are the land of Te Aroa. Te Nā Koutou Katoa.
Hemme ja Tai pokona te maan. Hei pää.